In this demonstration, we'll work with two network troubleshooting utilities. First, we'll look at ping, and then we'll look at traceroute. We'll practice using those commands on a workstation on subnet A. We'll use these utilities to work with other hosts on the same subnet, hosts on different subnets within the same organization, and hosts on the internet. As you can see, there are two routers between this workstation and the internet. One router here, and one router here. Any traffic that goes to the internet from the workstation must go through these two routers. First, we'll verify the IP configuration on this workstation. Let's open a command prompt. We'll use the ipconfig command to do that. We use the slash all parameter so that we can see all of the information available. When we do, we see that the IP address assigned to this workstation is 192.168.1.100. Its subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. That means we are on the 192.168.1.0 subnet. The default gateway is 192.168.1.1. If you look here, you can see that the DHCP server has the address 192.168.1.10. We also have a DNS server with an IP address of 192.168.1.10, as well as a backup DNS server on the internet with an IP address of 8.8.8.8. .8 Let's type CLS to clear the screen. The first utility we'll practice working with is the ping utility. The ping utility sends an ICMP echo request packet to a remote host that you specify. When that host receives the packet, it responds back with an ICMP echo response. If your system receives an ICMP echo response, that tells you two important things. It tells you that there is physical connectivity between the workstation and the remote host that you're pinging. It also tells you that the protocols are properly configured on that physical infrastructure. The packets are making it through. Let's try using it. Let's ping a host that's on the same subnet. We'll ping the DNS server. We'll ping 192.168.1.10. When we do, four ICMP echo request packets are sent to 192.168.1.10, and four ICMP echo response packets are received in return. There's a lot of good information we can pull from the output of ping. This parameter here tells you how big the ICMP echo request packet was in bytes. The time parameter over here tells you how long it took from the time that you sent the ICMP echo request to the time that you received the ICMP echo response. As you can see, each one took around one millisecond. Some summary statistics are displayed down here. We sent four requests, we received four responses, zero were lost. You will on occasion have instances where you send four requests and get three responses back. One is lost. That could be caused by network congestion, bad network cards, and all kinds of things. If that happens, you may need to troubleshoot. We also have some averages for the round trip time. The response was basically almost instantaneous, one millisecond, because we were on the same subnet. Notice up here that we pinged using the IP address of the remote host. You don't have to do that. You can also ping by domain name. Let's try that. Enter ping demo.local. Notice that ping first resolves the host name into the associated IP address. Then it sends the same four ICMP echo request packets to the remote host. Pinging by IP address first and then by DNS name can be very valuable. If you can ping the remote host by IP address, but not by its DNS name, you have basic connectivity. The protocols are working, but you may have a problem with the name resolution system. It could be the wrong DNS server address is configured, the DNS server is down, or there isn't a record for the host that you're trying to ping. Let's clear the screen. We know everything is working well so far, so let's send a ping through this router onto the internet. We'll type ping. Then we'll type the DNS name of the server on the internet, example.com. DNS will resolve example.com into the appropriate IP address. We'll send the four ICMP echo request packets. Again, we got all the responses for each of those packets back. This means that we have good connectivity to the internet. Now, notice that there is something different here. The round trip time is much slower. That's because these packets had to go through two of the organizational routers. Then the packets went to the internet and through many different routers, probably eight or more, before they reached the destination host. The round trip time was considerably longer because the ping packets had to travel such a long distance. We can see that down here in the summary statistics. At this point, let's shift gears and look at the trace route utility. Ping is awesome for testing connectivity between two hosts. However, it doesn't reveal much about the path a packet takes through various networks between the sending host and the destination host. If you need to troubleshoot routing problems, use the traceroute command. Be aware that on Windows, this command is traceRT. On Linux systems, it's traceroute. Also be aware that the way the command works is different on Linux and Windows. On Windows, it uses the ICMP protocol just like ping. On Linux, it uses the UDP protocol instead of ICMP. Traceroute uses the same ICMP echo request packets as ping. However, it manipulates the ICMP echo request packet a little bit to reveal the IP address of each router between the source sending system and the destination system. 
It does that by manipulating the time to live or TTL parameter. You don't want packets circling the internet endlessly because they couldn't reach their destination host. The ICMP protocol is designed so that every time a packet crosses a router, the router automatically subtracts the value of the TTL by one. If this number gets down to zero, you can assume that the packet is going nowhere. Instead of letting it circle the network endlessly, it gets dropped. Let's test this out. We'll do a trace route between this system here and the default gateway here. First, we'll do this with the IP address. They're on the same subnet, so we shouldn't see a lot happening. Now let's do a trace route using the domain name. Let's do demo.local. As you can see, we got one hop right here. Each router it goes through is called a hop. We see the DNS name and the IP address of this first hop router. Let's do something a little more complex. First, we'll type CLS to clear the screen. Let's do a trace route to www.example.com. This requires some time to complete because we're sending packets to a host on the internet. It'll have to hop through several routers before it reaches the destination system. Let's see what happens. We're seeing many hops delivered by the traceroute command. You'll notice here we have the same first hop that we looked at before. Now it continues going through routers or hops to the destination device. Sometimes you'll see a message from one of the routers that says request timed out. This usually means that the router is configured not to respond to ICMP echo requests in order to prevent denial of service attacks. Traffic goes through the router, but it ignores the ICMP traffic that's sent to it. You can see that in order to get to example.com, a packet moves through 10 different routers. There are 10 hops between this system and www.example.com, with the last IP address being the end device. Normally, you don't count the last device as a hop since it's not a router in most cases. If you're not able to reach hosts on the internet, you can use this information to troubleshoot problems. For example, if the second router was down, you would see no output for the rest of the routes because none of the packets made it past this router. That can help you know where to start troubleshooting because you know that this router is working. The problem is with this router here. That's it for this demonstration. In this demo, we practiced two useful troubleshooting tools. First, we look at ping, and then we looked at traceroute.